trying to do spread the joy and love from one community to another too mothers and sisters from another mystery we're all in this together like birds of a feather we flock together we rock together we all live in this world so we have to stay together and if we don't our world will soon vanish i hope that you're listening and that you understand Living where there are no crimes or violence, taking care of the community. Think of the world in your hands. Invert the negative, converting it to peace. Silence is a method to keep us in the dark. Silence is a method to keep us in the dark. Bring in the light and let your voice shine through the silver lining. Peaceful mind state, emotional connections to the world. Everyone join hands and create peace. For the bonus round, and y'all know how we do it. The bonus round is called J Squad.
Transit Arts crew. Great job, guys. Great job. Great job. Now, our pre presenters today are city council members and also GCAC board members, Priscilla Tyson and Eileen Paley. But before kicking off the corporate awards that they will announce, I'd like to. Uh, We'd like to introduce our individual award winners, and to help us with that is Franklin County Commission President Marilyn Brown. Please join me in welcoming Marilyn. What a great, great turnout this is, and weren't those kids terrific? Let's give them another round. I am so thrilled to be here on behalf of the county, and I've seen firsthand just how the Art in the House and Transit Art programs, how important they are to our kids and to keeping our kids off the street. And these kids were just terrific. Honestly, I'm, I was trying to figure out how they move, and I know I can't do that. Um, I'm sure many of you can't do that, I'm guessing. Um, I am proud of the support that Franklin County is able to provide to uh, all of these programs and to the other arts and cultural programs. I'm delighted to be here to show that these programs are so important. Each of, our pro each of our individual winners today has a profile video produced by WOSU, and each winner is going to receive a glass award designed by artists Mike Rick and um, Chris Orr from Glass, it's a Glass Art Award, and they're from Glass Access. Our congratulations go to all the individual nominees because their work makes Columbus a more vibrant place in which to work and live and visit. And we all know that phrase, but we all live that phrase every day. Our congratulations and gratitude goes to all nominees and winners because their work truly does make this community better. We'll begin our award presentations with the category of Arts Partner. The award for Arts Partner is presented to a civic community or business leader who is a role model for long-term and exemplary support to the Central Ohio arts and cultural community because of his or her significant contributions of time, effort, and or financial resources. The award honors lifetime support of the arts. Our nominees for the art partner category were art, were Java Kittrick, Jim Sweeney, and Paul Watkins. And do we have drum rolls for this? This year, the Arts Partner Award goes to, I know you're all waiting, Java Kittrick. Hello, my name is Java Kittrick. A lot of people know me as Miss Puffin. I came to Columbus about 30 years ago and uh, we had a family foundation called the Puffin Foundation. And I was engaged in helping community organizations at, um, with um, grassroots grants uh, for socially conscious artists, groups, and uh, other nonprofits. I have the Puffin West Foundation now and you can find us at puffinwest.org be able to live an artful life, I think is a wonderful part of America. Uh, my passion has always been with 
full reverence to the earth and also to be able to be here and to leave every place that I touch a little bit better. So when I was told and notified that I had received the Arts Partnership Award for the Greater Columbus Arts Council, I was very, very humbled. I think that the work that you do for a community can be faceless as long as it elevates the community. And I truly appreciate being recognized today, but I would also love to applaud all of the arts leaders who every day, with their imagination, style, and spirit, are able to work and increase the size of the envelope to make our town so great. Please welcome Java Kittrick and congratulate her. My little puppet. So I just really want to thank everybody uh, for this nod that they bestowed on me today. And I'm very grateful for the tools that I've been given to um, work with all my concerned and creative neighbors to help make Columbus a continued, successful, and progressive democracy. So thank you so much for your time today. The nurturing creative environment in Columbus is helping to give rise to the next generation of artists and entrepreneurs who will shape our community. That's why we recognize the emerging arts leaders. This award is given to an individual under 40 years old who has led significant positive effect in helping the arts in Central Ohio flourish through their leadership, innovation, creative, creativity, and or investment. And we've got a lot of nominees here, a lot of great nominees. And the nominees in this category are Eva Ball, Alex Bander, Andy Batt, Janet Chen, Beth Decker, Megan Green, Richie Kindler, Coco Loop, Diane Matusek, Aaron Moore, Tona Pearson, Andy and Chris Shaw, Matt Slaybaugh, and the 2011 Emerging Leader Award goes to Alex Bander. <laughs> My name is Alex Bandar and I help run the Columbus Idea Foundry. We are a community workshop and I say that we help people do four things. We help them design their ideas, build their ideas, show their ideas, and then sell their ideas. I went to school uh, for engineering and learned that very technical, uh, very constrained by the need to function and the arts to me represent a much more liberating type of creativity. More importantly, it's a lot more passion-inspiring. Uh, people get it uh, viscerally uh, in a way that uh, a cold um, you know, CAD drawing doesn't, but uh, rather it elicits emotions and, uh, and a response that uh, feeds me in a way that my life up to uh, becoming involved in the arts didn't. It's a huge honor. I'm uh, enormously grateful that people are enjoying what we're doing and find the, the niche that we're trying to serve useful, uh, a place where people can pool their tools, pool their projects, pool their skills, cross-pollinate with other folks who uh, might be more creative, more technically talented, uh, more artistic than they may be, and can help rise the quality of all of our work. Alex Bander, founder of the Idea Foundry, has chosen to share his dream with the entire Central Ohio arts community and through his generosity and personal risk, helping the artists of Columbus, helping to shape the future of the Columbus arts community. And please welcome Alex Bandar right here. And look at this incredible award. Congratulations you so to you. This is so great. Thank you. Thank you so much.
so much. Speaking of personal risk, seeing my face up there uh, on 20 feet wide, a bald man has a lot of face to blush, so thank you so much. <laughs> I'm not going to soapbox the Idea Foundry. If you're interested, please check our website out. But uh, I will risk offending everyone who's helped us for the last three years to make us the success we are now. So I'm going to, I can't possibly thank all of them. So I'll just thank uh, three. First, my sister, Layla, who's a, a sculptor and professor of metalsmithing up in Vermont, for always encouraging me to exercise my creative side. And I'm extremely grateful now that I'm in the position that I can help other people do the same thing. Uh, also grateful to last year's Emerging Arts Leader, Adam Brulette, for getting what it is that we did uh, way back before anyone else in Columbus did, and invited us to partner with his vision, the Wonderland Project, Independence Day, and everything else that he's got going on in Columbus. And most importantly, I'd like to thank Allison Mead, who has uh, stuck by my side for three years of 100-hour work weeks straight, and, uh, uh, and understands the sacrifices that doing something like this takes. So please see her uh, gorgeous and brilliant work at our shop. I invite everyone to come down and, uh, and have fun with us. Thank you so much. Our final individual award goes to an outstanding arts educator who has made a significant contribution to making arts education opportunities available in K through 12 school system or in after school educational programs or activities. The nominees in this category were Deborah Barrett Price, Amber Emery Mayler, Mayer, Cindy Foley, Becky Ogden, Becky Stahl, Tim Veach, and Deshaun Williams. And our Arts Educator of the Year Award goes to Betty Stahl. I'm Betty Stoll, and I'm the curatorial consultant at the King Arts Complex. I've devoted my life to the arts because uh, I feel that art is so important. It's all around us. It's in everything that we do, everything that we see, everything that we touch, uh, everything that we smell. I believe that it's important that, that we teach our young people about the arts, and particularly about African-American artists and African art, uh, something that was not taught to us in schools, and certainly children aren't getting that in schools now, and so it's important to me that we give them that appreciation. I've received numerous awards, and I think that this is the most monumental award that I've received, uh, simply because of what the Greater Columbus Arts Council um, is about. Uh, I have certainly worked with them uh, and all of the arts organizations, or most of the arts organizations through the years. But, uh, but to me, this is a very prestigious award, and I just feel honored to be among those who have received the award uh, before me. Congratulations, Daddy. For more than 60 years, Betty Stull has been making a positive difference in the lives of children, giving them creative experiences, giving our community something even greater, a brighter future for our young people. Please welcome Betty, and congratulations to you. Of course, we get an apple for the teacher for all of her good works. Thank you. <laughs> Given the dedication this week of the King Memorial, it seems fitting to reference the quote regarding King, who said, everyone has the ability to serve. King said, everyone can be great because anybody can serve. You only need a heart of grace and a soul generated by love. For me, serving has never been an option. It began so many years ago working with the Recreation and Parks Department 
and it culminated in my work at the King Arts Complex. Edith Wharton once said, there are two ways of spreading light. One can be a candle or a mirror that reflects it. I have tried to ignite the desire within our youth to learn and to create a brighter tomorrow. And I have often been the mirror reflecting the wonderful things I have been taught that I have passed on to others. Education is a journey, and I am privileged to have been able to serve. Thanks to Barbara Nicholson, Tony Johnson, Catherine Willis, and Roy Godlib for the nomination and to GCAC for deeming me worthy. Thank you. And now to present the business awards, I'd like to turn the podium over to my good friends, council members, Eileen Paley and Priscilla Tyson. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. And I'm very happy to be with you today. And on behalf of my fellow council members, I thank all of you for the work that you do to make Columbus a vibrant place for our residents and our community. City council members understand the importance of the arts and culture to the fabric of our community. The Community Arts Partnership Awards honor the businesses and for their creative and innovative support of local arts organizations. Today's winners will receive an original piece of artwork by artist Boryana Rusnova, Ina Helma Groot, and Stephanie Rond. It is my pleasure to present the 2011 Small Business Award to a company with less than 50 employees. The nominees in this category are Brainstorm Media Inc., City Scene Magazine, Electronic Commodity Corporation, Formation Studio, New Harvest Urban Arts Center, Outlook Columbus, SBC Advertising, and WWCD 102.5 FM. And this year's Small Business Award goes to Brainstorm Media. <laughs> Located in Grandview, Emmy Award winning Brainstorm Media provides video production, audio custom music, post production, post production, audio audio custom music, post-production live events, original programming, interaction, interactive multimedia, 3D motion graphics, and creative services. Pro Musica is just one of the local arts organizations that Brainstorm supports. Through their contribution of substantial in-kind contributions to the arts organization, Brainstorm Media has helped raise awareness of the breadth and depth in the Columbus Arts Organization. Brainstorm Media will receive Stephanie Ron's paparazzi smile and Ron Thalman, you're already on stage, so thank you for being here and <laughs> we'll accept the award. Congratulations to Brainstorm. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's been an honor to accept this award on behalf of all the folks at the Brainstorm Media team. And we also want to thank Janet and Jessica from Pro Musica for nomination. Um, we believe in helping out the arts in any way we can. And I know a lot of times it's hard to do that financially, so we try to do it with our talents and with our services that we can offer to other arts organizations that need support. And we feel that that's the way we can contribute to this community, not only because it's what we like to do, but we think it's the right thing to do. Thank you.
Again, congratulations to Brainstorm. And now my colleague on Columbus City Council will now present the next award, Council Member Eileen Paley. Thank you, Council Member Tyson. I am pleased to be here today to present the award in the medium business category. This award goes to a business with between 50 to 500 employees for its consistent support of the arts in Columbus. The nominees in the medium business category are Jenny's Splendid Ice Creams, Live Technologies, Port Columbus, International Airport, Resource Interactive, and Vori Sater and Seymour and Pease. This year's medium business award goes to Live Technologies. An audio, video, lighting, and staging production company, Live Technologies has supplied labor and equipment to numerous arts organizations in Central Ohio. The organizations they assist regularly cite their understanding of performance and audience needs as the key to their high quality work. Live Technologies is being honored for their partnerships and generous support of many organizations resulting in high caliber productions and presentations. Live Technologies will receive Boriana Rusovna in as walk down Bulgaria Boulevard. Please join me on stage to accept this award. Oh. Congratulations. I snuck up on it. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Columbus Symphony Orchestra for nominating us. They've been a great partner of ours for a number of years. Really pleased to be involved with them, the musicians, and the 600 volunteers that work in that group. Uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Sean Lovenguth, our vice president of our rental production group, whose commitment to the uh, symphony has helped make this happen for years, and Grant Ripp, who is the audio engineer for the symphony. Thanks, everyone. Congratulations to Live Technologies. And now I'd like to turn the podium back over to Councilmember Tyson. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Paley. And now for the award in the large business category for companies with more than 500 employees. The nominees are AEP, Big Lot Stores, Inc., PNC, State Auto Insurance. And the winner of the Large Business Award is, drum roll, AEP. AEP, American Electric Power, has long been a significant supporter of the arts in Central Ohio which reflects its philosophy of supporting nonprofit organizations that improve the quality of life in their communities. AEP's financial support includes both small and large arts organizations. Giving to them means a lot for them to grow, thrive, and achieve their artistic excellence. AEP will receive Helmer Groot's Not My Baggage Too. Well, and Nick Atkins is already on stage with me. Nick, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman Tossin. You know, um, AEP uh, certainly has been involved with the community for a long time, and we continue uh, to be involved in every way that we can, but for, in particularly the arts, though. Uh, the arts contribute to the vitality of the community, and I want to thank Pro Musica for nominating us. It's it's good that someone else nominated us because uh, I'm on the board of GCAC, and and uh, we're also an award sponsor. So you want to sponsor your own award. So, um, 
But uh, a little less than a month ago, um, I was a drummer up on the stage playing for a fundraiser. I think Live Technologies did that, but but um, it just shows uh, our view of the arts and my love for the arts, and certainly it contributes to everything that we do. And these young kids, uh, who uh, young adults, who were up here before, it just means so much to them as well. And I think that's just a credit to the entire community for us all to be involved uh, with the arts. So thank you. Again, congratulations to all of our winners and nominees, and thank you for all that you do for our community. At this time, I would like to invite my fellow GCAC board member and board chair, Bob Falcone, to, present, to come to the stage to present the Artistic Excellence Award. Thank you. Every uh, year, uh, GCAC staff, board members, look at uh, nominations for programs, for uh, performances, exhibitions, and cultural projects for the Artistic Excellence Award. This award is given to a arts organization who has great artistic uh, ability, has been innovative, and has taken some risk over the last year. It comes with a $10,000 check, so that's a good thing. And uh, we have four nominees that the board, just before this event, got together and looked at and picked a winner from. Those nominees are uh, Available Light Theater for uh, uh, Skyscrapers of the Midwest, the combination of Ballet Met and Shadowbox Live for Seven Diddly Sins, Catco Phoenix for uh, their uh, work on PNC on stage, and uh, finally, um, the Wexner Center for the Arts for their presentation of Mark Bradford. We put together a very short video helping you to understand some of these uh, uh, projects, and let's look at it now. The 2011 Artistic Excellence Finalists. Available Light Theater for Skyscrapers of the Midwest. Skyscrapers of the Midwest was first a critically acclaimed graphic novel by Joshua Cotter. Available Light Theater took a year to adapt and refine the work into a play. Skyscrapers of the Midwest on Stage is a gender-bending play that follows two young brothers growing up lonely in the Midwest and taking refuge in fantasy. And it's set in the 80s, so those fantasy worlds are full of action figures and stuffed animals and cartoons. Available Light Theater took on the challenge of bringing all the characters, both real and imaginary, to the stage. ALT used technology to do that, but went a step further. They pulled back the curtain on their own inner workings, letting their stage manager and Foley artist sit on stage with the actors. Just like a graphic novel where the reader is constantly aware of its author, ALT mimicked that experience by letting the strings of the theater show, so to speak. Skyscrapers of the Midwest was a real and raw story, told in a real and raw way. Ballet Met Columbus and Shadowbox Live for Seven Deadly Sins. I will help you cleanse yourself of sin. Seven Deadly Sins was the first time collaboration between the dancers and choreographers of Ballet Met Columbus and the musicians and actors from Shadowbox Live. The result was a performance that blended Beethoven and Jimmy Swaggart rock and roll and dance. Billed as a rock and roll ballet, Seven Deadly Sins was an unlikely pairing of the racy and the refined, a work that sought new audiences in a bold way. 
The program featured new dance pieces in between live performances of classic rock tunes and original music. Both organizations drew inspiration from each other, all the while navigating each other's foreign artistic process. And what happened was not only a critical success, but a commentary on the nature of sin itself. What is a sloth? Who is a glutton? Is pride a bad thing? It challenged not only the audience, but the artists as well to present sin as a hedonistic pleasure, yes, but to bring in a healthy dash of intellectual provocation as well. That is why I want to offer you this, this miracle soap. <laughs> Catco Phoenix and PNC on stage readings. Catco Phoenix embarked on a grand and terrifying experiment that paired social media with live theater. Companies from around central Ohio were invited to read various plays at Catco Phoenix's Rife Center Studios. Then, instead of asking patrons to please turn off their cell phones, they were encouraged to text and tweet at will. Their comments were then projected behind the actors in real time. The result is that a new type of audience began to attend. The experience appealed to those who had never seen a play before or who shied away from formal theater. The Twitter projection also allowed for stage directions and dramaturgy to be projected behind the actors as well providing key information and relevant points in the performance, providing a deeper understanding of the material for the audience. Plus, the readings introduced various theatrical companies to one another, fostering a new sense of collaboration within the Central Ohio theatrical community. Wexner Center for the Arts, Mark Bradford. LA-based artist Mark Bradford is one of the leading and most versatile figures in contemporary art, yet he had never had a retrospective showing of his work. The Wexner Center for the Arts changed that. The exhibition featured 45 works in a range of media, with an emphasis on his large-scale paintings made with paper, string, caulking, and other materials. Straddling abstract and representational, medium and message, Bradford's work filled all four galleries at the Wexner Center. This exhibition was provocative. It touched on issues of race, gender, sexual identity, and class politics. It was experimental, as the Wexner commissioned new works from Bradford that broke new ground in his career. The exhibition caught the attention of the nation, as newspapers from New York to L.A. responded to the retrospective and clamored to view the new work. The show is now traveling across the United States to much acclaim. Wow, tough choice, huh? And the winner is Ballet Met Shadowbox Live. expect this uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, first of all, I, I want to thank Gerard for having the courage to decide to work with Shadowbox. <laughs> I mean, because let's get real. Um, <clears throat> a year and a half ago when this uh, came, uh, when, when it was first considered, it probably wasn't the smartest move you ever made in your life. I think it was the smartest move I made. Well, actually, no, I'll talk about my wife later. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, I could not be more thankful both to you, to GCAC, to everybody, to PNC for supporting us, to Gerard for taking a chance on, on Shadowbox. The, the collaboration was an absolute highlight, one of the most exciting things that we have ever done, and I think probably opens the door to a whole new future for, for us for sure, and I hope for us together. Absolutely, and I think that the key is here that neither of us were scared of the other person, and um, we just saw what each other did, and we went for what we thought was going to be a great product, and we're so glad that everyone enjoyed it and got something out of it. And um, I also want to make a nod to Sherry Mitchell, who was the one who suggested I talk to Steve <laughs> in the first place. Thank you, Sherry. So from all of us to all of you, thank you for believing in our organizations. Thank you for this honor. And um, my God, is it exciting to be back downtown again. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>
Wild Goose Creative has been cultivating a community arts hub just north of the Ohio State campus area for over three years. They've hosted everything from comedy events to even a bacon camp, but now they've catapulted a neighborhood art project that you don't even need to get out of your car to see. We, uh, we, we did get a lot of involvement from the community. They we were lucky enough to be part of a very, um, very like-minded group of people um, that just want to see more beauty in this neighborhood um, and really have a lot of passion and pride for it. What has been coined the SoHub mural on the busy corner of Summit and Hudson came to fruition from over six months of discussion with community members and an overwhelming desire to beautify the area. A park was definitely something that was um, that's been talked about for years about being uh, being in that area, and I think that we've actually made it happen in in a very odd way. <laughs> um, but I think it's quite beautiful. The community was involved in every step. Wild Goose Creative got the ball rolling, but it was all in the hands of local volunteers. They prepared the wall for the mural to be painted, and they helped put the finishing touches on it. The mural is located in a unique place that is the gateway for many to downtown Columbus. When we were out there actually painting, people were honking and waving and thanking us already because you can tell they've been down that road and through that gateway so many times and um, you can tell they've been thinking the same thing, that something cool needs to happen there. In the past five years, the area surrounding the new mural has seen a growth in local businesses, creative professionals and local watering holes to go see a live band or watch a crew game. Wild Goose Creative not only wants to be a part of this neighborhood's future, but remember its past. Uh, coming upon uh, you know, the, the, the Columbus Bicentennial, we're looking to the future of all this exciting new things that are going to be happening uh, down the road in the next five, ten years where, where new businesses are starting in. You know, people are, are renovating these old houses, they're, they're bringing things back to life here. So it really spans, as cheesy as it may sound, the past, present and future. All we were trying to do is build community put it by, by making that wall beautiful, and I think that we've achieved that. This is Ashley Brooke, reporting for Art Scene. Songs are time machines. They can help take you back to a fuzzy childhood memory, push you forward to help you see the future, or they can help center you in the very moment that you're in. They're warm blankets in times of sadness, or a mentor in times of contemplation. For artist Melissa Vallier, songs were her way into her paintings. By listening to the music, I think I was tapping more into the emotion. And I was trying just to not think about things, just listen to the music and feel the emotion. You've been on my mind. Lucky for Melissa, her husband, Roland Vallier, is not only the creative director of the Columbus Symphony Orchestra, but an audiophile to the nth degree. Every day, he makes Melissa a soundtrack to inspire her work. And I just have this really eclectic, you know, passion, really and curiosity about music. So I just explore it and I just sort of filter it and then she, she gets the, uh, the result of the filtering. He always um, stretches my imagination, which seems like that would be impossible to do, but he does. <laughs> my spelling's getting better too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just an obsession, really. <laughs> you know, there's something like 116,000 tracks and about 380 days of continuous music. Well, that obsession paid off with over 66 different paintings inspired by 45 different artists. Melissa's paintings can take us all sorts of different places. We could hang out with Janis Joplin. Or Bach. Or stay a while and visit with Pink Floyd. With such a diverse group of songs and styles, 
Melissa's exhibition reinforces the unifying factor of music. If there's a universal language, it is music. There are many vacations. Mm. You get to travel to different places in the course of one song. These mini vacations inspired an energy that leaps off the canvas, invoking the spirit of the musicians Melissa connected with. What does music inspire you to do? This is Ashley Brook, reporting for Art Scene. Beautiful, strong, unique. These are words not often associated with Down syndrome. But after seeing an exhibition that has traveled from the United Kingdom to the Dublin Arts Council, you may see things differently. One of the main overriding ideas of the whole exhibition is to show that, um, you know, these are individuals. You know, our children are individuals. They can't be summed up by you know, one little box that says Down syndrome, there are a multitude of other things. Twelve years ago, photographer Richard Bailey's daughter, Billy Jo, was born with Down syndrome. In the course of researching his daughter's condition, Richard was disheartened. The images he found were misleading and even disturbing. It was this that led him and a group of like-minded photographers and parents of children with Down syndrome to create new images to create hope. We decided that it would be a good idea to show family life, to show that people with Down syndrome can fall in love, have a job, they can do all kinds of things if they have the, um, the right support behind them. It's just looking at people and seeing the individual, you know, and, and not the condition. 